Good evening. Welcome to the Spiritual But Not Religious show. I'm your host, George Lewis. If you hear a little sound in the background, a little echo, Tom's taking care of that. We had a, we had a speaker open that shouldn't be open. I want to tell you a little bit. Uh, first of all, I've got a super guest tonight. You're going to absolutely uh, uh, enjoy tonight's show. As a matter of fact, uh, we've got so much to cover, I'm not planning on doing any kind of a uh, introductory as far as the Spiritual Broadcasting Network or uh, the uh, uh, Spiritual But Not Religious show. The My next week's guest is uh, Marion Massey. Marion wrote a book called Dancing with God. You want to be sure and join us for that show. It's, uh, it's one you'll definitely enjoy. My guests for tonight are the Three Amigos, and they've written a book called Getting to the Heart of Interfaith, which deals mostly with the three Abrahamic faiths, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. Uh, it, it's, it's a good read, and the, 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 the motive and what they're doing is fantastic. Uh, there are three of them. We have a, a Christian pastor, Don McKenzie. We have a Jewish rabbi, Ted Falcon and uh, Sheikh Jamal Ra uh, Rahman, who is uh, in the Islam faith. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Jamal is not able to be with us this evening. And uh, Pastor McKenzie will be in a photograph only. He's here in Florida, while the other two are still in Seattle. Uh, and he's not able to do his video. So we'll have uh, Rabbi Ted Falcon on, on video. On, on Saturday of uh, this week, this coming Saturday, at Unity Church down on Proctor Road, they are doing a workshop down there and, and a show. Uh, not only are these guys doing uh, uh, what they call inclusive spirituality and trying to get a dialogue going between the uh, interfaith, they also, uh, they're also comedians at the same time. They put on a pretty good show from, from what I can see. So, uh, uh, Tom, I, I'm ready for uh, for our guests if we've got them on the line. We do, sir. There's a moon tonight here in St. Petersburg, Florida. How's, how does that moon look to you? This St. Petersburg is not a bad place, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Don, how are you? All right, how are you? Good. We, we've got Don. Ted, you're there with us? I am. Okay, great. Uh I, I really welcome you guys to the show. You you are you you're pretty, you're veteran uh, broadcasters yourself, aren't you? You do you do radio broadcasting. We had a radio program for a year weekly uh, back in uh, 2006 2007. And was that a local show there in Seattle? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I did. It was I, good. Go ahead. It was good practice for us in terms of you know. Playing off each other and all that. Absolutely, getting your message out. I did some. I did a couple of years worth of radio shows before I got into to this end of it. Uh, yeah, be, before we get uh, before we get started, I want to I want to uh, read a quote uh, that uh, I want to start with, and it's it's really meant to honor the three of you and the work you're doing because I just think it is such important work so necessary and so few people are, are doing this. I know there, you know, there, are, there is, you know, there are groups of people who are working at it, but they're just, it's too few. This quote's from Wayne Teasdale. Uh, I'm sure you recognize the name. He was, yes. he was in this kind of uh, work for years. And he says, breaking down the millennia old barriers that separate the religions and spreading the spirit of acceptance, mutual trust, and understanding is a profoundly spiritual act. I believe that, and I thank you for your journey, and I definitely yeah. applaud you for it. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. You. <laughs> Listen, one of the things you suggest as a powerful tool in your journey is our stories. And I, I know that uh, gee, stories are so powerful that you know large corporations are actually hiring people who are storytellers to come in and teach their people how to tell stories. Right. Because it's absolutely yeah. the, the, the best way to communicate. And I thought that would provide a really excellent entry point into tonight's conversation if, if maybe the, the two of you would, uh, would share your story. Uh, and then we'll kind of go from there. And whoever would like to go first. Uh, you, you, seeing as I, we've got Seattle time going out there, would you like to, would you like to go first? Yeah. 
go ahead, Ted. It's chronological order anyway. <laughs> okay. There we go. <laughs> okay, Ted, if you want to tell us your story, that would be great. Well, <clears throat> you know, this is just an hour show, so... <clears throat> well, yeah, we're going we're gonna to have to have... The story normally takes uh, four or five hours. You, 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 now, we don't want to start at the womb, Ted. <laughs> Actually, I was going to start a little before that. A little bit. <laughs> okay. Um, you, know, you know, one of the, one of the problems, problems of, of the religion, the religion business, business is, is that if, if one, one uh, winds, uh, winds up, up on a spiritual, spiritual path, path and, and within, within any, any religion, religion there is an authentic or there are authentic spiritual, spiritual paths, paths. One, has, one, has, one then, one then awakens, awakens to, to the reality, the reality that, God that God is bigger, bigger than, than any, particular any particular path. path. And, and that, in, that fact, in fact, we are, are one. one. And, and I think my I think story, my story in, terms in terms of interface, of interface began, began with that, with that kind of awareness, awareness that, kind, that of kind of realization, where it was, where no, it was longer no longer a case of one, one of my, of my path, being path being better, better than, than the others, others or any or others, others being better, better than, than mine. But looking, looking at, at how my path, my path helped, helped me, me and, and called call others, others uh, engage, uh, engage in that kind of fuller, fuller awakening, awakening, coming to coming grips, to grips with, with the reality of oneness, of oneness which sometimes, which sometimes gets covered over by heavy institutional, institutional concerns. concerns. As, As I did, I did that, that it, became it became clear, clear that interfaith, interfaith dialogue, dialogue was, was an essential part, part of that, that uh, journey. Our journey. Uh, uh, because, because that was that a way, was a that, way we that we could demonstrate, demonstrate that we, that we in, fact in fact, share, share a, a, a common, a common universal. universal. And when, and when uh, 9-11, uh, 9/11 happened, happened and, and uh, uh, I began, I began working, working with Jamal, Jamal who is not, who is able, not to able to join us tonight. tonight. And with and Don, Don uh, it, it sparked, sparked a lifelong, a lifelong interest, interest and a lifelong, and a lifelong commitment in an extremely uh, real way. Uh, so that it's come to be for us what we had never anticipated, anticipated and, namely, and namely it's come it's to, come be, a to be a ministry and, and uh, that's, uh, my, that's story. my story well you know we well, you know that the, uh, the uh, yeah, my my experience, my experience is you know, fairly, fairly close, close to, 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 to what i hear to what you, i hear you talking, you about, talking about is you know at some point you have to you're on this you're on this spiritual path, path you, you start you to start to realize just how how, how broad, how broad it, is it is and how inclusive, inclusive it should be, but it's not. not. So, right, so, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Don, how Don, about, uh, how, about uh, how about your how about story? Your story? You want to you want to uh, share yours, share with, yours us with us at this point? Sure, I, sure. I, I just would say, would that, say that Ted uh, uh, said it so well. It so well. There is a thread, thread running among the three stories that is that is we have a common. In other words, there's a sense among the three of us that we were on on this path.
for all, uh, three, for of all three of us. Um, Jamal, um, grew, Jamal up grew, grew up in a household that was, that was even, though even though Islamic, very, very, very deeply, very deeply interfaith, interfaith oriented. Um, um, and we've learned and so, we've much, learned from so much from each other. I think that, I think that um, we, we, again, as again, I said, as I said we, look we look back and we say, we were, we were each on a path, each on a path that was, that was um, headed, to, um, headed an to an intersection. Uh -huh. If we uh -huh. could recognize, could recognize that, intersection, that intersection, we'd be, uh, working, we'd be together, working together, and here we are. So was so 9-11 a catalyst, a catalyst for all of this, or were you together, together prior to that? 9-11 was a catalyst for our specific work. Right. Each of us had kind of worked independently, uh, but we didn't work uh, together until after 9-11. Well, that had a profound effect on uh, so many, so many millions of people. It was a, I, I right. a powerful event for me. That's for sure. It let us know that the level of uh, interfaith trust uh, and uh, knowledge was extremely low. Uh, the ease with which the entire religion of Islam could. could by uh, the media following 9-11 was deeply instructive. And it was very clear that a different kind of dialogue had to be open. Absolutely. 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 I, well, yeah, I, well, yeah the, the tough part the is, tough is, part that, is we that we have the extremism at work, that and, work and, and everybody, uh, everybody tends to, like, tends get, to like, get blamed get and blamed caught up, get caught up in the mix of that just because of being named. And the truth, and the truth of it is that there's extremism in Christianity and Judaism as well as well as in all religions. Yeah, absolutely. At least for sure. You have a guy burning a Quran somewhere somewhere in Florida. Terry, what? What's his name? Well, let, let's, let's talk, talk about, about that, that for just, just one second. That, that you know, burning, burning the Quran was a uh, a pretty foul act. act. But, but at, at the same time, time and, and, and this was this, was, this I, think I think is one of the one of the core issues, issues that affect this inner spiritual dialogue, and, and, and that, that is for you know, like for people claiming to be followers of Islam to murder people because of that act. Is, is, is atrocious, atrocious. And, and you know, know like I started, I started to say something about that fact on Facebook, and uh, the, I got actually got a twinge of fear in thinking about. I posted it, but, but you, know, you know, there are some, there's an awful lot of craziness going on out there at this point. Uh, it has a profound effect, I think, on our on our willingness to, to dialogue. Uh, do you find that? So there are about 1.6 billion Muslims in the world. Right. Um, what the news media didn't uh, attempt even to, co to uh, announce was that more than 1.5 and several hundred million um, did not uh, do anything violent when the Quran was burnt, although they felt, it is likely that they felt deeply about it. Well, well, you know, that's not a, I mean, for the media to, that would have been too good to speak about. They don't, they stir up stuff that's negative and, and bad. That seems to be what sells. Well, that's why shows such as yours are so valuable. Yeah, we, we need, we need a lot more people talking about a lot of things that around, right. around all of this. You know, well, let, me, let me tell you, I, there was an exact point where I trusted you guys in, 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 when, I, when I started reading your book. And I trusted, you know, like where your book was going to lead. And, yeah. uh, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll read you a little quote from that. And it's in your introduction, you say, it appears that religions are at the heart of some of the world's most brutal conflicts. That's a powerful statement, and it's absolutely true. However, I've made similar statements to people uh, in various religions, and they are affronted and offended by that whole idea. Right. Religion has about as much authority as, as almost, almost anything, anything on, on earth. earth. And, and even, even though... though the religions are brought, are brought into being for the purpose of healing, um, they, they quickly begin, begin to lose that substance, or, or at least they're vulnerable, vulnerable to losing it, and, and instead uh, can, can be used, that authority can be used to justify 
violence, violence and hatred and, and all kinds, all kinds of terrible things, things that, that uh, and the consequences of that are, are we're, we're experiencing, experiencing that right, right now. now. Absolutely. And so one of the purposes of our work is to uncover that reality and help everyone to see how important it is to continually monitor whether or not our religious institutions are fulfilling their purposes. I mean, every institution has to take care of itself. Absolutely. Otherwise, it, it would it would die, and that is important. But often institutions end up doing only that, or so much of that that the substance, the real substance, the reason why they came into being, gets lost, and they wake up. If they do wake up, and they realize they've been emptied, and so um, there's an opportunity here to think more carefully about how our institutions are fulfilling their purposes. And if they're not, how they can be called back, because the history of religion in the world is a history, as Ted said, of waking up and of going to sleep and being awakened again, often by someone we would call a prophet, who recognizes that all is not well and starts to say things that helps people to say, oh, yeah, something's wrong here. We need to get back on track. Right after he makes, they start saying that right after he makes them angry. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if Jamal were on the line, he would likely share something that he shares often when we do our presentations, which uh, he says uh, God uh, revealed certain truths to some people. And then the devil came along and said, let me organize that for you. <laughs> and that became religion. And that became religion. And, and, and so that's our, and, and that's a prelude for our saying that it's important to make a distinction between religion as an institution or a conveyance and spirituality, which is the substance of the teachings of a spiritual teacher. Uh, and, um, you know, they're two different things. We can't have just substance without something to convey it, like water without a glass to hold it. Um, but uh, we also, institutions that have become emptied aren't any good either. In fact, when they are empty, they can be vulnerable to all kinds of terrible things. Absolutely. Well, you know, when, when, if you, when you look at a corporation, the corporation tends to take on the personality, the beliefs, and the actions of its head, of its president. And, and, and everything kind of flows from there. Isn't religion really the same? And I mean, do you, are, how much dialoguing are you doing with the heads of, of these various organizations? Or are you kind of working from the ground up and working backwards? Well, first, of first of all, one of the, one difficulties, of the difficulties is Islam, Islam is, not is not organized in the way, in the way many, many other, other well, in the well, way, in the way Judaism, Judaism and Christianity, Christianity tend, tend to be organized. To be organized. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There really, there really no is no authoritative, authoritative group, group that speaks, speaks for, for all of Islam. Islam. Uh, that, uh, that's how, how why an imam, an imam in, in uh, uh, some, some country, country and can get so, so upset and lead, and lead people, people in doing, in doing things, things that in fact, in fact are contrary, contrary to, the to the teachings of the Quran. Of the Quran. Totally. totally. Um, the Quran, the Quran does, does not uh, uh, advise, advise killing, killing people, people uh, uh, you know, who you burned the Quran. No, that's, no. That's, 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 but, that's but, not, but, but does it does not, but does it, does it not say something to, something the, effect, to the effect, and I, I, and I, I can't, quote can't quote it, but that, uh, that infidels need to be killed? Well, Jamal, again, talks about this with a great deal more knowledge than we can. Right. I was really but, hoping he could, uh, too bad he couldn't right, make he it. He points out a couple things. One is that the verses immediately following and immediately preceding that sword verse uh -huh. that is often translated, kill the infidel, um, talk about doing everything you can to maintain peace. Right. Uh, and when he looks at kill the infidel, he sees it much more as pointing to an inner struggle, you know, where there are parts of ourselves which uh, go to sleep and get caught, so caught up in ego uh, that we forget the greater being of which we are a part. And that, 
that part of us has to be subdued. And, um, and that's really the job of all religions, speak to that in some manner, don't they? Uh, for, right. Yeah. So, so it depends. You know, you take, as he is fond of saying, uh, Jamal says the Quran itself says some of the verses are meant allegorically and some of the verses are meant literally. And as he says, unfortunately, the Quran doesn't say which is which. A absolutely. Neither does the Bible. Right. right. But those mm -hmm. of us who don't, for instance, I don't look at the Bible for literal history. Right. I look to the Bible for spiritual instruction. And that's a whole different thing. I look to see the unfolding quest for uh, awakening. And that quest has peaks and valleys, moments of clarity and moments of incredible confusion, moments when we transcend the confines uh, of our limited ego and times when we are captivated by it, captured by it, uh, and speak right out of the ego. And when we talk about ego, what we're really talking about is the false ego. Uh, and, and, well, and, I'm talking about that, the separate self right. that has a tendency to consider that it's the only self. Right. Rather than being an, an instrument through which a greater wisdom can unfold and walk its way into our world. Yeah, what I've discovered uh, in my in my own nature and my own ego is that uh, it is it's certainly my enemy. It's out to kill me, and not smart, not a very smart ego, because if it would realize if it killed me, it doesn't exist anymore. But so it's a weird kind of a thing no. that goes on. Uh, uh, and, you, and, know, I, you know, I, I, know, I, I don't know. I've I've spent a, I've spent a, a lot of a lot of a lot of time. A lot of time uh, 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 personally, uh, personally studying, studying the, you know, the, the, various the various religions, mostly, mostly, very much because I think it's the most important issue issue that I have, that I have to deal with in my, with in my life, and, and that you know once I you know once I deal with that, that everything else kind of flows, flows from, that, from that. All my decisions are they should be, and uh, and uh, I, you know I you know I I I find that the mystic mystic. Portions, portions of each of, of, each of the, Abrahamic the Abrahamic religions, religions uh, tend, uh, tend to, to uh, make me very make me very comfortable, comfortable and, and, and there's a real there's a real alignment, alignment between the three. Do you, do you, find, do you that find that similar similar, similar uh, feelings, with feelings with that? Oh yeah, oh yeah, we do. Yeah, the yeah the mystical uh, uh, realization, realization whenever whenever it awakens from what, from whatever culture, culture it awakens is always, is always the same. Right. Right. Absolutely. And then Absolutely. It, and then it gets then it gets expressed in particular, through the particular cultural, cultural symbols uh, and, uh, and traditions, you know, of any, you know, of any particular, particular group. Group. But the but the realization one. is one. Well, you know, it seems, well, you know, it to, seems to me that we, we really uh, need to spend need to spend more, more energy, energy on, on on really on really celebrating the diversity. The diversity. I mean, uh, it's like the Dalai, it's Lama, like the Dalai Lama, says, Lama says there are geez, so, geez, much so much variations in the way of people, way of people and, 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 and it, it really it makes it really makes a spice of life. There's you know something it only makes it only makes sense that there would be different variations of God. You know, God you know God speaking to people at the level they're able to to hear it or to deal. With. And, and, we and, just and we just make a, such a uh, such an issue such an issue out of, out of uh, ours is the ours only is the right only way. right way. Right. Right. That must that prefer, must prefer to talk about people hear God, hear God different in ways. Way. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I somehow suspect that the speaking is always the same, but we are more open or less open to receive it and to understand it. At any given time. Oh yeah, we're talking the same thing. It's the filters that we have as people that's going to you know, right. cause that message to come in a particular right. way. Right. So, what do you? What is your biggest challenge in in your work? What do you? What do you find to be the the, the most difficult part of this for you? John. Well, I think you can, <laughs> that was a nice punt no, there. I think if we could <laughs> see each other now, that's the, this is the time when we would point. Yeah, I, I hear. We point at each other. I think that you know. I think the big challenge is to help to 
help everyone understand this reality that we're not always awake spiritually. Right. In fact, most of the time we're not. And and so we look at these uh, practices and verses of, from our traditions, and we, and we, we, we take, take them literally, literally without, without really, really understanding, understanding the stunning metaphoric potential, as Ted said, the way, way we can, we can be instructed in our, in our spiritual growth by stories and verses, verses of our traditions and so forth. And so uh, I, I think this is, you know, you know the, the, big the big challenge, challenge always, always for any kind of religious leadership throughout history is, is try to, try to help, help all of us understand that, that we, need we need to wake, wake up and we, and we need to, to, to do things that help, help us be awake, awake. Namely, namely the things that are, that are called, called spiritual practices, practices. Reading, reading scripture, praying, praying meditating, meditating, journaling, all the, all the kinds of things, things that contribute to, to uh, sharpening our, our spirituality rather than putting, putting us to sleep. sleep. One, of One of the purposes of Shabbat, Shabbat or Sabbath uh -huh. is, is to give, give us the space and the time, time to, to, do to do that. And, and in, in urban, urban America these days, um, there, there isn't that much time. Boy, that's, Boy, that's refreshing. precious little of it. You know, you know, one of the one of the things that it's kind of it, 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 it seems like a double-edged sword where some of this kind of goes awry, and that is, uh, you know, you know, we, you go, back go back to the printing press and Gutenberg, and all that seemed to be uh, really really beneficial as far as spreading the gospel or spreading you know whatever religion we're talking about. But uh, through the ages, the way all of this has passed has been from one person sharing with another, mentoring another person and teaching them and making sure that they get it. Something happens and gets lost when it gets up from the pulpit and, and, we, and we start talking to the multitude and uh, it, it goes on a, a TV show. Uh, and I think it goes back that what you were talking about with the filters, you know, we, we, whatever we hear, we can use it in various ways. And I, and I think uh, some of the heart of of, of the of real spirituality gets lost in that, unfortunately. No, it's I think, interesting. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, part of, certainly part of church history prior to the Reformation uh, flowed from the idea that if regular people read the biblical text, they would become very confused. Oh, it can be crazy-making. So you needed the priest to tell you what it said and what it meant and how it was to be observed. The Protestant Reformation really came to say, wait a minute, uh, the people have consciousness. We need to read the thing. Uh, we need to find out for ourselves, and we can find out for ourselves. And that was really, that was a revolution. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. However, the ways in which institutionally it got handled wound up, in many cases, reflecting that uh, which they had rebelled against. Right. You know, where, again, it's the person in the pulpit telling you what it says. Well, well for example, the, um, uh, Martin, Martin Luther, Luther, of course, was... Angry, angry that, that the, the uh, Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, Roman Catholic, Roman Catholic Church, Church, was selling indulgences and using, and using the, money the money to build St. Peter's, St. Peter's in Rome, and, and, and that was the, the, uh, the moment, the moment when, when he wrote the 95 Theses and posted, posted them on the wood castle door. door. Posted, posted. That was, that was, that's, that's, a that's a nice word for what he did with it. It was posted. posted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and the recurring theme in that document is Christians must be taught. Ildo Sende Sun Christiani. And... Uh, so, uh, so his, his, his lot of his, lot of his energy, energy had to do with if we if we knew better, that is that is as spiritual people, if we knew better, we wouldn't be doing things like buying indulgences. indulgences. Instead, instead, we'd be we'd be we'd be more awake, awake and so forth like that. Like that. But, the but the irony, maybe maybe even the tragic, tragic irony of all that is that the consequence of the Protestant Reformation wasn't a wider spread adult education. In the, in the sense of the early, of the early church, church when the knowledge of the, of the faith, of the faith really, was really more shared, more shared than it is today, today. The, 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 the consequence was public education, which was a good thing. But the clergy, but the clergy held, held on, on to the knowledge of the faith. Of the faith. And, I would and I would say even today, today we're not at a place, at least in my experience, in my experience where uh, uh, children, children, adolescents, and adults, and adults know, know enough, enough in the sense of sheer religious literacy. Uh, uh, no, 
know it and I know as much as, much as they should. should. Oh, and if, oh, and if they did, uh, we, would we would be, be not we would not be in, in some, some of the situations that we're in today. Oh, I think, oh, that's, I think that's, that's that's absolute, absolute no question. No question. Uh, which, 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 which brings me to, me to one of the questions I was going to ask you. Don't you think that what you're doing, this kind of work, ought to be taught in schools? Because it's not because it's not going to happen in homes. Interesting. We've, we've met with uh, some uh, superintendent, uh, superintendent of school systems. systems. Uh -huh. I think uh -huh. the uh -huh. most recent was in Hartford, Hartford Connecticut, Connecticut. Uh, uh, talking, talking about, about programs, programs of religious literacy, literacy in public, public education. education. We, believe we believe that it should be there, be there uh, uh, and, and it, it, uh, it's, uh, a it's a sensitive issue, issue it's because it's not about, about teaching, teaching people, people to be that, that, that to be, to be any religion. But it's, about but it's about raising the level, the level of, literacy of literacy so that people, so that people understand, understand what, what the, religion the religions are about. Right. Well, you know, we find that in colleges, and they seem to do it uh, pretty effectively. You know, of course, it doesn't get to everybody, but, uh, right. you know, through comparative religion. And it just seems to me that a, a comparative religion uh, and, and also include, uh, you know, the evolutionary ideas. And then once everybody's educated, they can make a choice for themselves where, where they want to go. But, but, you know, I think what we're, what, we're, what we're really up against here, the biggest problem is misuse of power. That goes back to when the priests were, you know, like no one had a Bible, no one knew anything, and you had to go through a priest. And, you know, there were the good priests, and then there were the priests who were misusing their power. And so our human nature kind of gets gets underway, gets underfoot here, and causes us all kinds of grief. But isn't yeah, often, oftentimes, what appears to be a proclamation of religion is really uh, coming from a power place yes. or an economic place, uh, and it's disguised as religion. Yes. Well, you know, one of the one. Of the, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just going to add a footnote to what Ted said that the need for power and money is at least in part due to the need to be assured that our own worth is adequate. Huh. And I mean that is underneath so much of what we're facing. That, that's that a huge. Even part. though religion teaches that we all have equal value. We don't value people uh, that way. We value people in terms of money and achievement and, you know, where they live and even what race and ethnicity and so forth. And, and so uh, that has to be addressed. Well, and, that's, we, and that's an age-old problem. You go back to the story of Jesus and, the, you know, some were complaining about the robes that he had being too expensive. And uh, for what, I mean, it's, it's I, I'm not sure, I'm not, I'm not even sure how we ever get that, straightened out uh, you know some of these problems go so deep it, it almost uh it can almost make you feel uh, pretty uh, impotent and as though uh, uh we you know like we're we, you know we're not going to be able to to overcome this however you know everything that i do is about transformation and promoting the whole idea of transformation and that's what i see you guys doing you're you're really right in the trenches in this uh, in, in promoting this transformation we felt that. Go ahead, Don. No, uh, well, I was going to say, certainly the question of is there any hope is one of the major questions we get. Go ahead, Ted. 9-11 um, brought out a lot of spokespersons uh, speaking against uh, the Abrahamic religion. Yes and maintaining that until we got beyond them, it would be impossible to have peace in our world. And it's our point of view that it's, it's I mean, okay, some people don't want to engage in those. That's their, that's their right, and there certainly are other paths. But that kind of thinking negates the spiritual richness of the Abrahamic traditions. So I think part of our journey has to do with reclaiming what we see as the core teachings, the essence, the spiritual essence of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and utilizing that, utilizing the core teachings to evaluate other teachings, other practices, and other texts 
of each of our traditions. Because some of the texts are help us walk those core teachings into the world, and some of the teachings and some of the texts actually appear to be quite contrary to the core essential spiritual teachings of each of the faiths. And those, we believe, have to be named and have to be faced, and we have to begin to understand where they came from. That that I think is that that really makes sense to me because uh, you know that's one of the things for me when I read uh, scriptural uh, writings that you, you know you come across exactly what you're talking about and it's like all right so what am I supposed to do here pick and choose or how 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 shall I you know work with this uh, you know there's another group of people that uh, that have have arisen in the last 15 years, 10, 15 years probably, who uh, at some point called themselves or uh, uh, or Jewish, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure as far as Islam is concerned, but who who now declare themselves as spiritual but not religious. Mm -hmm. right. uh, and and the the there was a, there was a government uh, survey on that 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 shows that. One fifth, twenty percent of the population in the United States now declares itself as being spiritual but not religious. And yeah. and 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 uh, do you do you address that group at all, or are you strictly speaking to the? Uh, I know you, you your your point is not proselytization, which is pretty neat. Well, I think our message we want as many different kinds of people to hear our message as possible. And right. I think what you just described reflects this reality that people either consciously or unconsciously have decided that the institution isn't doing what it's supposed to do. Yes. And so they have decided they're going to separate themselves from that. And the problem, at least from my point of view, is that um, ultimately I think it's hard to be only spiritual without some kind of community, which almost inevitably become some form of an institution. But again, if, if the institution's behavior and thinking isn't monitored, it can be emptied. So, so we have lots of sympathy for people who say that, and we hope that what we're saying might encourage people to seek uh, new communities of faith or whatever, in some way, find ways to continue some kind of dialogue both within and between um, faith communities. Well, I think the mere fact that people talk about spiritual but not religious lets us know how they define religious as being different from spiritual. Yes. Yeah. I think one of the ways to be spiritual is through the metaphors, the teachings, the traditions, the rituals of a religion. And one of the ways to be spiritual is to sit and meditate without any affiliation to any of the religions, and both can be spiritual paths. So I think those people are, are essentially saying what they have been taught to understand as religion is something they're not interested in, and for them, religion does not speak spirituality. Well, not just them, not not just what they've been taught, but their experience. Exactly. Yeah. Their experience is that that religion fosters competitiveness, comparison, uh, the the fact that my group can be saved and nobody else can. It it fosters division, separateness, fragmentation. It's small wonder. Yeah. That people would be turned off by that. I think it's good that they're turned off by that I exclusivity yeah. rather than inclusivity it's and, and, and don, don you 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 I, my, my next statement, statement was going to be the, the, the thing, thing that that, 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 that we, we lack, lack is spiritual, spiritual but not religious people, people is community, is community. That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a that's a huge, huge piece that's, that's missing, missing and, 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 and so, so essential to spiritual growth and one of one of the things that a religious tradition at its best can offer is uh, context, context in which, in which that, that community, community can, can be held, held and, and observances, observances and rituals, ceremonies, ceremonies which, which can help strengthen, strengthen the focus 
of that, of that community, the, the cohesiveness of that community, not, not only towards, towards the, the awakening, awakening of spirituality, spirituality but towards, but towards walking, walking that spirituality into the world, world through, through acts, acts of compassion, through, through concern, concern about, about the state, the state of, of our environment, environment the state of our planet, the state of all people. Isn't at its core that what you just said is what religion is supposed to be about? How do we how do we do for our fellow man? How do we make our help make our fellow man uh, happy? Well, we say we say fellow people because we don't want to leave women out. Yeah, I I, I, I totally agree. Uh, our, our fellow individuals, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, the. Uh, uh, how do we, you know, there's some things that, that are, are, are hard to negotiate well, from an experiential place. A couple of them I'm going to, and I'll ask each of you in, in your own faith. Uh, one of the things that, you know, when I talk with people about uh, the Christian religion, one of the things that, that is very abrasive to them is, uh, you know, this heavy uh, proselytizing. Now, you're Presbyterian, is that right, Don? No, I'm United Church of Christ. I actually grew up as a Presbyterian, but I'm United Church of Christ. Okay, and, and in Presbyterianism, there, the proselytizing is pretty low-key uh, from my experience with it. Yes, that's right. But how do you deal with that? I mean, I mean there's, that's pretty valid from, from an experience. Uh, and, well, well, I think what you're saying is the, the general sense that, it, that some, many Christian people feel that the real answer to the way to peace is that everybody should be Christian. Right, right. And not, and not just any, any kind of Christian, but the true, the true Christian, you know. In other words, In other we, words should we should all be the same. same. Right, right. And, and, and that, that, that is, that one, is of one of the biggest sources of violence, of violence and hatred that the world, that the world has, has ever known. known. Yes, yes. And it's, and it's totally, totally inconsistent, in my, in my judgment, with the teaching of Jesus. Of Jesus. Right, right. And, and, and so, and so as Ted was saying, you know, we, we've identified, we've identified four, four teachings from each of, from each of our traditions and, and also, also identified, identified things that are consistent with those core teachings and, and things, things that aren't. And one of the, one of the things that is not consistent with, with core teaching, core teaching in Christianity, Christianity the, the idea that Christianity is the only way. Right, right. Even though, Even though the Church, the church has, taught has taught that. The Latin, the Latin is, is oh, oh, can't think can't of it now, but it means, but it means there's, there's no salvation, salvation outside the church. The church. And, and the, odd, the odd thing is Latin the Latin actually means, means there's nothing, there's no, there's no salvation, salvation outside, outside that which is, that which is not ex, ex, actually, actually where there, there is, is no outside. outside. And, so and so it's a complete, complete uh, contradiction. contradiction. And, and um, um, you know, Christianity, Christianity is one of the ways to the place where we're headed. Judah is one of the ways. And, 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 Islam and Islam is one of the ways, Hinduism, Hinduism Buddhism, even, even atheism and agnosticism, and agnosticism are, ways are ways that give meaning, meaning and purpose to people's, people's lives. lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as long as, as, long as common the common good, good is honored, honored there, there, you, know, you know, all kinds of things are possible. Right, all right. Kinds, all right. kinds of good things are possible. So, so, how often, how often do you do you, uh, you get that, get as, that a as a resistance from people? When, 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 when you're when you're talking with people, with people do they do share, they share uh, uh, with you with you the, the uh, what they find what they find to be problematic? To be problematic? What, 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 what we often, we often do, do, you know, you know, what we often do is kind of open that category of conversation, uh -huh. and then have people break into groups so that they can talk to each other. Ah. Because uh, if we're we're talking to a large group, it's it's uh, very difficult to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with the audience. Right. We do have one of the things we like most about the times we go speaking is the Q and A sessions, because it's during the Q and A sessions that we really can respond to what's on people's minds. Right. And we inevitably get questions like, "How do you talk?" somebody who believes theirs is the only way. I just recently lost, uh, I think it's, you know, the relationship is coming back, a good friend who, you know, went over the deep end with that whole idea that, you know, like, this is the only way and I need to convert you and, you know, it just became intolerable. I couldn't be around him at all. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, so it, it, it's unfortunate. But it's just all part of the thing, you know. I think the the the, the what I, what I would like to talk about is how 
at this point is how do how do you see all of the individual churches, is all three uh, religions, obligation to deal with extremism? And you know, I I know you hear uh, well. There's not enough people uh, from the uh, Islamic faith who are speaking out against extremism. But yet, I I know that's not true. There there are, and I'm sure they're speaking from you know in their own pulpits. But the problem is, it really doesn't get disseminated to where everybody is aware that that's going on. So the question is how to get it disseminated. Yes, yes. After 9-11, After 9/11 every, every major, major Islamic, Islamic group, group in this country, in this country and, and, and even across the world, the world voiced, voiced their condemnation, their condemnation of, that of that act. Right, right. But, but, practically, but practically nowhere, nowhere in any, in of, any the of the media did that show, did that show Absolutely. up. Absolutely. So how, so how do we create, we create a, vehicle a vehicle for, for allowing, allowing such, such statements, statements to, show to show up? Well, you know, Paul, you know, part of the problem, honestly, I think, is is the ownership of the media and their bias because we get fed whatever that owner believes. And there are, what, about four groups, and, and they really control the information in our country. And I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what the answer to that is, but we, we sure need something more going on. I think you, what you guys are doing is a big help with that whole thing. Uh, well, certainly that's, that's part of our, we do hope that's true, yeah. Yeah. It's, our, our aim is to get our message out, and, and any way we can do that, uh, we try to do it. So we've got so about, we've got about oh, I don't know about, 12, don't know, about 12, 12, 13 minutes, minutes left, and uh, uh, we could we could <laughs> I got a whole I got a whole list of things I'd like to talk, talk about, with you about. But you've got about you've got about seven, seven discussion, discussion questions, questions in the back of your book, and uh, and uh, if you were to if choose, you were to choose from one or two, one or two of them, of them to, to, talk to talk about, uh, about uh, which 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 do you find the the most powerful and the one that gets discussed the most? Which one? See the question that said, "Where are you speaking next?" Uh, <laughs> I, you know what? I missed that one, but I I, I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> there, and, and that kind of falls under the heading. There's always more, huh? Yeah. Well, uh, just to say that we're going to be in Sarasota this coming weekend. Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I we definitely will not, I announced that at the beginning also. Uh, Okay. So, so yeah, absolutely. Uh, Unity we Church. We were on hold then, so we didn't know. That's exactly right. Unity Church on Proctor, uh, at uh, on Saturday the sixteenth. What time is your first one? Ten o'clock. Ten thirty. Ten thirty, and then you have a second one in the evening. Yes, I think that's at seven. And and they're basically different. Pro- correct. They are. Yeah, the but- morning program is more of a workshop format where we will talk a little bit about what we've been up to and allow people an experience of getting into that kind of dialogue themselves. And then the evening will be more of a presentation, but it will have a Q&A period. So you, do you two have uh, some kind of a, a Larry Moe and Curly skit that's, that would work on our show, or is that only going to happen on the stage? It's hard to do it when we're not together. Yeah, that's. Uh, I, I thought about that being a problem, you know, and that's right. and that's part of, uh, you know, I think a big part of your message is that, is that you're able to bring it down to a, a humorous level and get people laughing. I, uh, right. What we talk about is serious, but we are not solemn people. N- not, I, not, not at all, not from what I... Right. So we like to have a good time. We like to invite people to have a good time. Uh, in Jewish tradition, it says there are two ways the soul opens most fully. One is through laughter and one is through tears. And if I have my choice, I'll take laughter. Well, you, you know what? At this, at, at this age in my life, it's like, you know, they talk about no, you know, we learn from pain, and that's often the thing that catapults us spiritually. But I, 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 in line with what you're saying, I found that joy is just as much of a motivator, at least in my life. Right. Uh, so, but all that said, in the back of our book, there are questions that go with every chapter. Yes. So when you say the seven questions, I don't know which chapter. Well, well, there's one that I'd like to focus on for a moment here that I think is right. uh, in 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 people's mind, and I, all of them are are powerful uh, uh, conversations. But let's talk a bit about uh, 
your perspectives on Israel and Palestine. Don, I think you were you spent time there. I I don't I don't know. Uh, uh, did have both of you been there? Oh yeah, yeah. In fact, Ted and Jamal and I have all been to uh, Israel and the West Bank uh, twice together. Oh, that's and right. It Ted, talks about that in the book, doesn't it? Yeah. And Ted's been to Israel several times, and I lived in Lebanon for a year and worked in Cairo one summer. Jamal has lived in Cairo and so forth. So the Middle East is. Um, something that is known to us. We're not necessarily experts, but we certainly have um, feelings and so forth about what's happening there, a sadness about the, the violence and the suffering. And, um, well, I can give you my sense. I mean, the, the, you know, as a Christian, I find myself needing people to understand the two realities that need to be understood as as a part of any conversation about what's happening. One is that uh, Jews have been, um, there has been a repudiation of Judaism by Christians yes. for 2,000 years. Yes, absolutely. And, and that, what, that has involved not just saying that Jews should become Christian, they should, you know, wise up and, and get the message, but there's been an enormous amount of suffering physical, mental, spiritual, that has accompanied that. And so the need for safety and security should be obvious to anybody who understands that issue. And And Israel Israel is one one response, response, obviously, to that. that. Of course, it also has has historic historic roots to go with it. But the other other reality, of course, is that 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 when when Israel was was established, established, um, large large numbers of Palestinians became became refugees, and and they still are refugees. Yes. And so there are refugees that... That, that, need to be, that, that issue, issue needs to be taken into consideration, too. too. And, and, and each side, side needs to understand, understand the other. The other but, but, but there, but there wouldn't, wouldn't have had the, the, we wouldn't have, have the need, need for safety, safety and security, and security for, Jewish for Jewish people at the level, at the level we, have we have it now if we, if hadn't, we hadn't had, had what, Christian what Christian people, people have, done have done to them. Yes. yes. And I think, and I think we, need we need to understand that. I don't say that to make Christian people feel guilty, but just to recognize it as a fact. That needs, that needs to be faced, faced in, in, in the, the sense, sense that naming, naming the truth is the first step, step toward healing. healing. Um, um, you know, we're, you know, we're all for uh, uh, full, full access, access to all human civil, civil rights. rights. Everybody, everybody there. there. Right, right. And, and but, but, Ted, Ted uh, I'll, I'll let you, let take, you over. take over. Well, well you know, you know I, I, we, we are, are in agreement about, about many things. Our focus, our focus uh, and, uh, and our stance comes from, from different, different places, places of experience. experience. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, um, one of one the, of the embarrassing, embarrassing things, things about the state of, state of Israel, Israel is that prior, prior to Israel, Israel since, since the Jews, the Jews were, were not in any position to be, to be um, powerful, powerful heads, heads of government, it was, it was uh, uh, easy for us, for us to criticize the unethical, the unethical acts. acts. Uh, you know, uh, when, you know governments when governments get carried, carried away with their own power, power. Now, now that there is, there is the reality, reality of Israel, Israel. Some, of some of the very things that we criticize, we criticize others, others, we are, we are uh, doing, uh, doing ourselves. ourselves. Often. And, and uh, uh, I think I it think has, it to, has be to be recognized that, that although, although one, one might appreciate the, the where it came from, the Palestinians, by and large, are not viewed as full human beings by the governmental structure. And I'm not saying by the people, but by the government and the policies of Israel. It's a painful thing for those of us uh, who see it happening that way to witness right, and to know that a deeper kind of... Uh, Dialogue, a deeper kind of understanding, is absolutely required. It it literally can't go on like this. It's just waiting for something, either something terrible to happen. Um, what What's fascinating to me now is the possibility that through the United Nations, a Palestinian state, because no one else is able to do it, a Palestinian state might be uh, created. Right. 
which would, which raises fascinating issues because that's how the state of Israel came into being. So you'd have the same agency which created the state of Israel create a Palestinian state. Um, well, until, they, until they, they wish it, it could happen through, through negotiation, right, right, something, something has to happen. Well, 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 until, well, they, until do they, they do that, they're, they're not it's not going to get settled. Until they have a state, they have, state, they have, have their own home. It's not going to get settled. And, 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 you, you, and, and you and I both, both know that. I believe, I believe that. that. I also, I also think, think it's important, important to know that, that absolute, absolute justice for, 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 for everybody, everybody is, is impossible. That there, are, there are compromises that have to be made. And... and the, the goal, goal has, to has to be kept firmly, firmly in, mind. in mind. And the, and goal, the goal is two, two countries, countries living, living side, side by side, side not, fighting not fighting each other. Right, right. That, uh, that uh, you know, we're, you know at, we're at, I think, I think at, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a probably, probably maybe, 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 the, maybe the, the biggest, uh, biggest crossroads, crossroads uh, uh, the world, the world has ever come to. Come to. And, uh, you, and uh, you, you, you allude to that in your book, that, that, that uh, you know, something, you know, something has, to has to happen because we're, because we're, we're certainly on a path of, of, uh, of, of destruction, destruction self-destruction, incapable, incapable of destroying of ourselves. ourselves. So hopefully, so hopefully you, know, you, know, work, you know, the work you guys, you guys do will, will filter, will filter out, there. out there. And, uh, and uh, I, I, for, our for our audience's sake, sake uh, hey, are, hey, are, are, do you know if Unity is going to tape your program and get it up on YouTube? If you haven't if suggested, you haven't suggested it, to him, it to him, I, I, I suggest that you, that you uh, ask, him to, ask him to do that. Uh, and for, uh, our, and for our, our, our audience's sake, sake, if you're in, if you're in, if you're in the Sarasota, Sarasota Bradenton, Bradenton uh, uh, even Fort Myers area, it's well worth the trip up here to Unity. We've had a pretty a pretty serious discussion tonight. However, the, these guys really make this this whole issue much lighter and much more fun than what we were able to do here tonight. So uh, I I really uh, encourage you to uh, to on, on uh, Saturday the 16th uh, uh, get on over to uh, Unity Church. I, I've I've thoroughly enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed our conversation, guys. We've we've kind of run out of time. Um, uh, I wish we could have had all three of you, but I I think that. Uh, uh, it's been a wonderful show. I appreciate you taking an hour out of your time and from Seattle and from St. Petersburg and the moon. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you, George. You, you bet. Yeah. I'll, I'll look forward at some point. We'll, we'll have you back again and uh, we'll have to figure out how we can do a little of the, of the humor. Okay. Great. Great. Sounds uh, good. Okay. You guys make it a good night. Thank you. You too. Oh yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye now. Good guys, Tom. Good hearts. Good hearts. And you know what? And not only good hearts, but they're actually trying to do something that, uh, to make some changes. So it's been a, a good show for me. I hope as, that you've enjoyed watching it. Uh, be sure and come back next week for Marion Massey, Dancing with God. It'll be a great show next Tuesday, same time, same place. And in the meantime, don't forget to accentuate the positive and have a fantastic week.